Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Good to see you. We're still online. What do you know? But that allows people from all over the place to join us. So we're going to begin with Shir Hadash, a new song. Shiru Ladonai Koha Aretz Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash Shiru Ladonai Olha Aretz Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash Sing unto God all the earth a new song I will sing unto God a new song Sing unto God and we'll all sing along All the earth a new song unto God Shiru Ladonai Kol Haaretz Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash Ladonai Kol Haaretz Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash Sing unto God all the earth a new song I will sing unto God a new song Sandy Nelson is going to lead us in the candle prayer. And you can see them, right? Yes, we can see them. Rukata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam, Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav Mitzivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, Sovereign of the Universe, <clears throat> who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Thank you, Sandy. And Jordan is going to lead us in the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu V'shabbat Kodsho V'havahu V'ratzon Hinchelanu Zicharon Lemahase V'reheshit Ki hu yom tehila le mikrae kodesh, zecher le tziyat mitzrayim. Ki vanu vaharta, veotanu ki dashta, mikol hamin. Veshabbat kodshecha, Avahu v'ratzon chinchal tahanu Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-shabbat Amen. L'chaim. Our Torah portion for this week is Tazria Mitzora. This is a double portion and it deals with impurity, impurity from childbirth, impurity from bodily discharges. And that's of course the Torah portion that kids love to get for their bar mitzvah. It also deals with three types of impurity called sa'ra'at, impurity from a variety of skin conditions, 
impurity of fungus or mold on clothing, and impurity of fungus or mold on the walls of a house. The way our ancient ancestors dealt with these conditions was primarily by isolating. Clothing is isolated to see if the fungus persists. The house is similarly shut up for a diagnostic period. The person afflicted with certain skin conditions is likewise segregated for periods of seven days. Even the new mother is excluded from the sanctuary and all consecrated things. Sound familiar? As we're isolated during the pandemic, the old is apparently new as well. Isolation is how we've dealt with this pandemic. And even now with a substantial portion of our population inoculated against COVID, we still need to be masked and socially distant and online in order to stay safe. But we do see the light at the end of the tunnel and soon we hope to resume a life of visits and hugs and in-person services. We continue with the circle song. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace. For all of us in prison. Circle for release. A circle for the planet. Circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release. Circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. According to our Torah portion, the person afflicted with the diagnosis of Sarat must run through the camp calling out impure, impure. So everyone knows that there's a skin ailment among us. Now this could be seen as a way to isolate and disdain the person, stigmatizing him or her. But there's another interpretation. The Talmud explains, and he shall cry out impure, impure. That is to say, he shall make known his affliction to all so that they may pray for him. This is a little bit like our Mishaberach, which we pray for all the people in our community who need prayers of healing. Rabbi Robbie Harris comments, the calling out loud is done for a different purpose altogether from isolating the sufferer. It's so that others, the community can respond to his distress. Moreover, the Talmudic reading understands that the suffering person is not required to ask that others pray on his behalf that the suffering person is not required to do that, but that they merely publicize his distress so that the community will respond appropriately. We hope our Mishaberach prayers help those in distress, not only to heal, but to feel embraced by the concern and care of our community. The Hatzikadosh. Yit barach, yit barach, vishta bach, vid pa arvit romam vid nase, vid hadar, vid ale, vid halal, shemeda kudasha, rehu, le elam in kolbir hatava shirata, tu sperhatava nehemata, dami ran belma, vimaru, amen. 
and we continue with the Baruch Hu, the call to worship. La, 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 la. piece by Ruth Brin on our Torah portion, Tazria. It's called Laws of Purification. Though it was difficult long ago to heal the dread and deadly spots of leprosy, it's also difficult to heal the deadly hatreds we carry in our hearts today. How shall we even recognize beneath their bland and persuasive smiles, those who are diseased with corruption? How can we banish the evil that seeps into our own minds? O oh Lord, our God, we whose souls are blemished and whose minds are impure, ask of you. By what rights can we be clean again? By what ceremony can we be cured of all our moral illnesses? Teach us, we implore you, as you taught Moses, the ways of righteousness and strength. Help us to heal ourselves and to be physicians to those who need us. Make our souls pure as they came from you. Ahavad Olam. Ahavad Olam. Beit And we 
continue with the Shema, the statement that God is one as we are all one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad 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 Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Machuto Ve'olam Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Machuto Ve'olam Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad And Carol Lee is going to lead us in the Ve'ah Hafta. We love God just as God loves us. Us. Please join me. Be a half tongue, eight Adonai, Hecha, the whole of Abha, Ukhon of Shecha, Ukhon Eotecha, the Hayu, Hadbarim, Hayu, Asher. Anochi mitzavcha hayom alabavecha v'shinan tam levanecha v'dibar tabam v'shiktecha b'veitecha uflechtecha v'derech uvshokbecha uvkumecha. Ushar tam le old alya decha, the hayu le tota fold, bene necha, uch tav tam, al mesuzot be techa, ubi sharecha, lamantis karu basi tem et komis totai, vi tem kedoshim le lohechem. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Asher Hotze Tiachem, Meir Ritz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Elohim, Ani Adonai Eloheichem. Thank you, Carol Lee. Always a pleasure. Zohar Atkins points out that the Torah requires the priest to play an active role in ministering to the afflicted, escorting them to and from the camp. The very person who is supposed to be an emblem of purity is placed on the front lines with those considered highly contaminated. Despite placing a high premium on order, cleanliness, and decorum, the Torah apparently disrupts its own system to ensure that those afflicted by plague are given dignity and respect. By going outside the camp, the priest signals that there need be no shame at the margins. On the one hand, you can read it cynically. The priest is a sovereign deciding who belongs and who doesn't. On the other hand, you can read it idealistically, as I do. That is Ohar Atkins and myself. Priests are servants of God. Accompanying the vulnerable is the highest service as elevated an act as approaching the temple altar. He also points out that we're told, don't say that a plague has appeared, but say something like a plague has appeared. 
So this expression, something like, teaches that we can tell a different story, a more positive story. In other words, we can sing to the Lord a new song. And by that same token, the Israelites chose to see their enslavement in a new way, not as a permanent condition, but one that invited radical change. The Micha Mocha, the Song of the Sea. During this pandemic, we've learned not only to value the doctors who have taken care of those afflicted with COVID and the scientists who have created an effective vaccine, but we also have come to appreciate those who normally we don't really think about very much, the essential workers such as delivery people. A legend from the Talmud underlines the importance of recognizing people like this that we often take for granted. It's the story of Abba, the blood letter. So Abaye and Rava were two very important Babylonian sages, but God gave more honor and love to Abba, the blood letter, who received blessings from heaven every single day. So what was the secret to the blood letter's greatness? Well, the Talmud tells us when he would perform a matter of bloodletting, he would bring in men and women separately, and he had a special garment that had a slit where the bloodletting instrument was inserted. When a woman came to him, he would have her dress in that garment so he would not see her exposed. And he had a hidden place where customers would put coins to pay him. The one who had money would throw it there while the one who did not have money would not be embarrassed. When a Torah scholar came to Abba, he would take no pay from him. And after the scholar arose, Abba would give him money and say to him, go purchase food to heal yourself. As Dr. Ruhama Weiss points out, modesty, modesty, and again, modesty. Abba the blood letter's modesty is an internal attitude, the absence of condescension towards his patients. The Hashki Venu, a prayer that asks that we lie down in peace and rise up in peace. Oh. 
Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Leshalom The Amidenu Malkeinu Lechaim Spread the shelter of your peace over us Guide us in wisdom, compassion, and trust. Hashki venu Adonai, Eloheinu leshalom, v'hamidenu malkeinu. Save us for the sake of your name. Shield us from hatred, sorrow, and pain. Hashki venu Adonai, Eloheinu leshalom, v'amideinu malkeinu lechai. Ashki venu Adonai, Eloheinu le shalom, the Amidenu Malkeinu le Eileen Stein is going to lead us in the tefillah. Adonai Zifatai Zifatai Tifach Ufiyagi Tehilatecha Adonai Zephatai, Zephatai Tiftach, Ufiyagi Tehilatecha. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avoteinu, Ve'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Ve'elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Ve'elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanorah, El El Yom, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Bikone Hakol, Bizochir Haste of Opa Imahot, Ume Big Ula Liv Nevenahem, Lama Anchemo, Be Ahava, Melech Hoser, Umoshia, Uma Gain, Baruch Adonai, Magain Avraham, the Ezrat Sarah. Ata gibor le olam adonai, mechaye hako ata rav le hoshia, marid hata, mechake o chayim bechesed, mechaye hako berachamim rabim, so ho mech no flim. The rofe holim, who matir asurim, who mekaye memunato, liche nehe afar, micha mocha ba agivu rot, who me do melach, melech me meet. U mechaye, u mat niach yeshua, vene emar atale hachayot hako, 
Baruch Adonai Mechaye HaKol Atakadosh Vashimcha Kadosh Ukdoshim Bechol Yom Yachalalu Chasela Baruch Adonai HaEl HaKadosh Thank you so much, Eileen. And we'll take a moment to pray silently. We conclude the tefillah with a prayer for peace. Shalom Rav, a great peace. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha. They are called Yoshvei Tebel. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha. Tasim Le'olam. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha. They are called Yoshvei Tebel. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Tasim Le'olam. Ki Yata Umelech Adon, Lechol HaShalom. Ata hu melech adon lechol ha shalom shalom rab al Yisrael amcha ve'akohu yoshvei tebel shalom rab al Yisrael amcha tasim leo. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Be'akol Yoshvei Tevel. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Tasim Le'olam. So we're between the past second day of Passover and Shavuot when we count the Omer. And I'm going to first recite the blessing and then mention what day it is. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav etzivanu al sefirat ha-omer. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with commandments and commanded us concerning the counting of the Omer. Hayom esrim yom shehem shnei shavuot v'shisha yamim la Omer. Today is 20 days, which is two weeks and six days of the Omer. Now, the Omer used to be a certain amount of uh, barley that was brought to the temple. 
And so the Omer was the measure and we bring it every day to the temple. Now that there's no more a temple, we still count the days and the mystics of our tradition connect each day and each week with an aspect of our personality. Rabbi Michael Strassfeld says that during the seven weeks between Passover and Shavuot, there's the tradition of focusing on the seven mystical qualities of God. And these qualities are also found in human beings. This week, we explore the aspect of tiferet, which is compassion or beauty. And it's also known as emet, as truth. Tiferet blends and harmonizes chesed, loving kindness, and gavura, strength or limitations. And those were the two aspects for the first couple of weeks of the Omer. Now, it's not easy to balance chesed and gavura, loving kindness and strength or limitations, right? But with tiferet, we can feel compassion toward people by perceiving their totality, their strengths and their weaknesses, and we can accept them. And this is why this particular aspect is also known as truth. The truth is that we are all imperfect. We are also striving to be kind and loving, and Tiferet is compassionate acceptance. Tiferet is often also translated as beauty, because when we look at the totality of the world and of life, we see astonishing beauty in nature, art, and music. In fact, beauty takes many forms. When we look with Tiferet, with loving compassion, which is our heart, we can perceive beauty in an ever-expanding number of things and people. This is Tiferet, a heart of compassion. And it's something that might balance out cancel culture where everybody seems to be expected to be absolutely pure and perfect, which is impossible. We take a moment now to think of those in need of healing, whether a body of mind or of spirit. We think of congregants and friends and family of congregants, Jonathan Davidson, Ben Henderson, Kara Gilman, Rabbi Steve Robbins, Gloria Mangus, Steve Lux, Leslie Ferris, Julie Lapidus, Pamela Mangus, Johnny Sikat, Dennis Boylan, Gary Droutman, Irene Sherman, Sandy Schneider, Roberta Gershon, Bill Oppenheim, and Rabbi Larry Goldmark. And please feel free to add a name either by unmuting or by putting it in the chat. I see a lot of names in the chat. Ron Jones, Don McCoy, Regina Richards, Peter Th A. Peter Thorne, Ivan Brandler, Diana Anderson, Ruth and Sandy Landis, Kim Coe, Raul Camacho, Alex Poveda, Janice Parsley, Alan Mason, Carol Powers, Solomon Fishman, Jackson Griffin, Elaine Burke, Art Ochoa, Chuck Kramer, Jean Kramer, Babette Cooper, Myrna Barth, Amy Morton, Richard Banny, Francine Hoffman. Any other names? Kirsten Welch. And we think of those who were shot uh, in Indiana and in Indianapolis uh, the other day in another mass shooting. Please join us in the Misha Baroff, the prayer for healing. Harvey Fields. <laughs> Yitzchak v'yakov Mi sheberach imotenu Sarah Rivka le'ah v'rachel May the one who blessed our mothers May the one who blessed our fathers Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Bless us with the power of your healing. Bless us with the power of your hope. May our hearts be filled with understanding 
and strengthened by the power of your love. Bless us with the vision for tomorrow. Help us to reach out to those in pain. May the warmth of friendship be our sorrow. Give us courage, give us faith, show us the way. Mi shiberach avoteinu. Mi shiberach imoteinu. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer and bless us as well. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer and bless us. As I mentioned, our Torah portion this week is the double portion Tazria Mitzurah. Both deal with a kind of plague. Tazria deals with a skin ailment that must be contained so it does not infect the entire camp. And Mitzurah deals with a house fungus that must be stopped or the house is torn down. Well, my dear friends, we have a plague in our society and I'm not talking about the COVID pandemic. I'm talking about the plague of racism and it's killing the black men and women in our society, as well as other people of color. 30 years ago, white America woke up to the fact that on a regular basis, black folk and people of color have been subject to police brutality. This moment occurred when a video emerged of LA police officers savagely beating Rodney King. And even then, Los Angeles police chief Daryl Gates, no bleeding heart himself, said, we believe the officers used excessive force taking him into custody. In our review, we find that officers struck him with batons between 53 and 56 times. The four white officers were tried on charges of using excessive force. Three were acquitted and the jury failed to reach a verdict on the fourth. Rioting that lasted for six days ensued during which 63 people were killed. So what did we learn from this incident and what has changed in three decades? Let me be so bold as to say absolutely nothing. Since that time, innumerable people of color have been killed by the police. We know about those that were caught on videotape, on cell phones or on police body cams. Many, many others have gone unrecorded. But one outrageous killing after another has occurred and become public in the years since Rodney King. I'll just name a few. 18-year-old Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. 12-year-old Tamir Rice in Cleveland, Ohio. 43-year-old Eric Garner in New York. 32-year-old Philando Castile in St. Anthony, Minnesota. I could go on and on. No police officer has been found guilty in any of these deaths. Then over the past week during the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd, yet another black man, Dante Wright, was killed by the police in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. At the same time, police body cam footage was released showing Karan Nazario being pulled over by two police officers in Windsor, Virginia last December. Nazario, a black and Latino second lieutenant in the US Army Medical Corps and guilty of nothing, was pepper sprayed, handcuffed and forced on the ground with no explanation as to why he was being arrested. And then yesterday we saw police footage of 13 year old Adam Toledo being shot and killed by a cop in Chicago. To quote my colleague, Rabbi Josie Hudson, the Eternal said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? 
And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Then God said, what have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. As George Floyd lay on the ground, a police officer's knee crushing his neck, cutting off his oxygen, choking him. As Mr. Floyd called out, mama, as he pleaded the same words as Eric Garner moaned almost six years ago, I can't breathe. We confronted once again a true evil of our society. Not all lives are valued equally. We are a country that is rooted in institutional racism. We're a country that from our inception counted slaves as three fifths of a human being that has oppressed and committed acts of violence against black people and people of color. And that continues to fail in our ability to extend the same sense of security and safety to all our citizens. Black people, people of color are being killed in our streets. And this has got to stop. The Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism has set as its priority racial justice. This year's campaign is about securing voting rights for all. We're urging Congress to pass the For the People Act, S1, and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, HR4. I ask you to please join me in being part of this crucial effort. And if you'd like to participate, please email or call me. I'd like to conclude with this prayer by Naomi Levy, Rabbi Naomi Levy. Innocent blood is calling out God, echoing through the universe. We must ask ourselves, what have we done? What have we ignored, allowed, denied, excused? But today we shed our excuses in a time of soul searching. We take this pledge for our black brothers and sisters and for you, God, I am my brother's keeper and I will change, change my heart, change the laws and change the unwritten law that says the way it's always been is the way it will always be. I will do my part to uproot hatred, prejudice and racism. I will speak out against police brutality and a system of justice that is unjust. I will vote out leaders who do not lead and together we will unite as one in a time of repair. We will build and we will rise, black and white, all races and faiths to a new way, a new day. As the marches fade, our work begins. Bless us, God, work through us. Teach us to lead with love. Help us to turn our helplessness into actions that will heal our nation. Shield us from indifference and despair and our tendency to forget. Fill us with strength and hope and the perseverance to make lasting change. In memory of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, and the countless souls whose blood cries out from the ground. In their memory and in their honor, we take this pledge. I am my brother's keeper, amen. So I know that's a pretty heavy duty sermonette, but I just felt that I had to talk about it because it just has to stop. It just has to stop. And I know some people here will disagree with me about what the causes of all this are, but you know what, one after the other after the other, it just is too blatant to ignore. I see some comments in the chat. Thank you, everybody. Count me in to help you. Good, thank you, Christine. I would love to have people join me. Um, we're actually calling the effort by the Religious Action Center, um, not voting rights, but freedom to vote. And I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna look like, um, but there's, I, I've sent out some stuff today to some people, but if, if anybody's interested, please, please do let me know and join me. Okay, anybody want to weigh in on that or on something else? Okay, anybody have any announcements they'd like to make? Any simchas? This has been a tough week, but I'm sure there's been some simchas, some happy occasions. Anybody have? James, Rabbi, thank you. Rabbi, yes. My, my uh, son, Sam 
is, has just gotten a new job as the director of hunger services for uh, the agency, which he, the nonprofit that he works for in Truckee. That's excellent. Following in your great footsteps, yeah, well, Eileen. He, he's, uh, he has his own footsteps and he's just trekking away. That's wonderful. That's great. And of course, Eva Young will be called to the Torah as a bat mitzvah next weekend. So she'll lead our service on Friday and she will be bat mitzvah and uh, do the service as well on Saturday morning. So please everyone join us. Bill Oppenheim, who's home from being in rehab, not for drugs, but for a very, very painful back. Uh, we welcome him back. And he said his grandson Dax's sixth birthday is today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that since we're counting the Omer between Passover and Shavuot, on Shavuot, we are going to have a confirmation service with four lovely young people. And that is on May 16th, which is a Sunday at 630. So I invite everybody to come to that as well. We have Torah study tomorrow morning. And Howard Rubin continues to do Omer meditation on Sunday afternoon. So you're all, of course, welcome to join him there. Anyone else? Oh, Rabbi, we, yes, should, please, Jason. we should take this moment to celebrate that the men's and women's bathrooms have been remodeled and, and are reopened so that when we get back into the temple, we will have beautiful new restrooms. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Can we, we thank make reservations? Yeah, we thank Eric Lesser for- One at a time. <laughs> yeah, one at a time, exactly. Um, Eric Lesser has just devoted enormous amounts of time to getting these bathrooms done. I mean, in fact, he spent about two years on it. And um, one contractor after the other flaked out. As anybody knows who's tried to have work done in their homes, this happens a lot. And he finally got a contractor and they're about to start. Uh, in fact, they started early on the uh, middle bathroom, the all gender uh, bathroom. So yes. And they've discovered the source of the smell in the, mender, in the men's bathroom. I think uh, many of you noted that and nobody could figure out what the problem was. It turns out the pipes had just like completely been disintegrated. And so everything was escaping out of no pipes but it's all gonna be smelling wonderful and looking beautiful. And Jason is the chair of the COVID committee. We've had meetings. We have another one Sunday night to talk about how we're going to come back. And religious practices has met as well. And we're trying to figure all this out. It's, it's very hard because we don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So we can make all the plans in the world. As they say, man plans and God laughs. So we don't know uh, absolutely what is, uh, what is ahead for us? But you know, we are making some plans. We're hoping to have um, in-person services soon. Um, Jason says, anyone is welcome to join our meeting. Jordan, are you raising your hand? I am. I wanted to just throw in a little Simcha. I wanted to officially welcome my mother as a resident of California. Yay! After all of these years, she's finally moved. She's just moved to a new place in Northern California, literally around the corner from my brother and sister-in-law and their daughter and son-in-law and all their kids. And so she's right in the middle of Mishpucha up in uh, Northern California, Mill Valley. Um, welcome to California, finally, after all these years. We're gonna spotlight her for a minute. There she <laughs> is, you look lovely. And you're in your new place, yeah. which is coming together, I hope. And thank you, Jordan, for your lovely music tonight. We got a lot of compliments in the chat. I hope you saw them. And Amy- Thank you everybody for the very kind words I did see, thank you. And Amy, thank you so much for doing the tech behind the scenes. Great job tonight, as always. Amy's our president, so she serves many functions. You're getting some claps. And thank you. Thanks, Christine. So, um, you know, it's always fun to do a service here with my two animals because the dog starts getting very antsy at a certain point, like he wants to go out and I can't really get up and let him out. And the cat starts meowing because she wants me to pet her. And, <laughs> it's and, just and really I'm fun. stuck behind a microphone, so I can't help. Sorry. 
It's okay. Jordan, Jordan, your music was absolutely beautiful, really. It came from the heart and reached everyone's heart. Thank you, Ruth. All right, we will continue with the Alenu. 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 Alenu le Shabbat Ladon Hakol. Latin Gunula le Rosebreshit. Shelo asanu kegaria haratzot, velo samanu kishmahavata. Shelo sam kelkenu kahem, vegoraleu kehohamnam. Vanachnu korim, mishachagim umodim, lifne melech v'alfei hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. somewhere in the ether playing for us. We take a moment now to think of those who are no longer with us. May their memories be for a blessing. Jean Maines passed away a few weeks ago. She, she will be buried in a few weeks. Unfortunately, it's taking a very long time. So we offer our condolences to her family. Robert Doctor is in Shiva and Kathy Rose Baratan is in Shloshim. Is anyone else observing any of these moments or the first year of mourning? If you'd like to please add a name in the chat or unmute. Susan Jones, Adele Lucas. Arnie Brenda Geller. Op Arnie Geller. And Werner Kopel. Werner Kopel, Brenda Oppenheim. Ashley Glick. John Alfervik, Helen Iniguez, Albert Archibek Jr., Fred Siegel, Rabbi Bennett Herman, Sanford Victor, Sad, Sad Levine. Hang on. Um, Marshall Salins, Joseph Hantman, Donald Lester, Janine Lester, Dina Eliason, Julie Eliason, Julia Poveda, Dr. Bob Levy. Oh, it was Sid Levine. Anyone else? We're also observing yard sites this Shabbat for Rose Bonn, Evelyn Edith Schwitz, Alfred Gehring, Nathan Besson, Nicole Silberkleit, Stanley Karp, Judy Sokol, Herbert Brown, David Ramick, Ida Ramick, Roberta Blyer, Saul Blumenson, John Hurst, Ben Meltzer, Donald Lester, Peter Leapman, Lee Ekman, Samuel Zubkin, Anna Zubkin, Florence Jacobson, Philip Chernak, Jerome Palmer. If anyone is observing a yard site, please mention a name or put it in the chat. Sandy Nelson's son-in-law's four family members in Lima, Peru. Any other yard sites? Please feel free to unmute and join me. Oh, Mary Ellen. Hello. 
Please feel free to unmute and join me in the mourner's kaddish. Yit gadol, yit gadash, mei rabah. Be'almad, yifrach, yamukei, be'amlich malchutei, v'chayechon, v'yomechon, chayei d'chol beit Yisrael, v'agala, v'yikman harim, amen. Yehei shmei rabah, mei barach, le'alam, l'almei almaya. Ibarach mishabach mivar mivromam vinase vitadar vitalevi talal shmeid kudusha berichu leela min kol biachata b'shirata tush pachata b'nechemata the amiran be'alma be'imru amen. Hey Shlom Rabba Min Shmaya, Chaim Aleinu ve'Avu Yisrael, Imru Amen. O Se Shalom Ramav, Uya Ase Shalom, Aleinu ve'Avu Yisrael, Imru Amen. May the source of peace and peace. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved. As together we say, Amen. Amen. And I'll ask you please to mute yourselves again as we conclude our service with the song, We Are Loved. We are embraced by arms that find us even when we are hidden from ourselves. We are touched by fingers that soothe us Even when we are too proud for soothing We are counseled by voices that guide us Even when we are too embittered to hear We are loved, loved my thanks to Carol Lee and to Eileen for leading us in various uh, prayers. And now the mozi for those who haven't eaten yet. Mozi lechem in haaretz We give thanks to God for bread Our voices rise in song together As our joyful prayer is said Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz Amen Shabbat shalom, everyone. Please feel free to stay on to chat. 
and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a great week and see you soon.